So my boss walks into the garage and says, What are you doing? Aren't you done with this? Finish this, come on. So after a little negotiating, we talk, a little banner back and forth. Came to a conclusion. We'll get the tractor fixed. It's the best way to go about it. We're going to discuss what went wrong in the first place. Right there, that shaft that I'm putting through, that's where the shaft for the hydraulic pump on the front of the tractor would be. That shaft there is running through a brand new kingpin and front axle. And you're seeing the way that kingpin is moving as I wiggle it back and forth. The bolster the kingpin sits in is basically worn out. So we're going to remove all of that tear down as much as we can on the front of the tractor to get that bolster off the tractor. So, front end loader mounts on the side. There's the other boss. That right there, kind of a shop foreman. You'll see I gotta keep moving. Can't waste any time. Can't mess around too much. Boss sees me screwing around. Boss isn't gonna like it. See, checking out the tools I'm using and everything. So we're going to disconnect the front end loader mount so on the right hand side of the tractor there. We're going to get that out of the way. Right there, that's my thinking hands. The back part of that bracket has a pin through it. I needed to figure out how to get the weight off of it so I could get that out of there. left-hand side bracket over there, taking that off. Wasn't really anything different about it on the other side, except for the fact the hydraulic tank is inside of that, so it was quite a bit heavier. Just collecting the antifreeze out of the radiator so that there's none in there when I remove it. Anytime you're dealing with hydraulic fluid, don't wear any clothes you care about because they're bound to get ruined. I'm currently fighting with the high pressure line out of the hydraulic pump. As soon as that's disconnected, then the majority of everything for the hydraulic system is just out of the way then. You got two bolts on the bottom of the radiator, one on each side. Then there's kind of a pin support brackety thing that goes up top. Pull a cotter pin out of that and then the radiator's free. Disconnect the input and output hoses on that. She's ready to take off. The tractor's currently supported by the bolster in the front, and that's the part that we're looking to remove, so we're going to get that up in the air, move those jack stands back, set it all back down on there so that we can start unbolting that. I picked right where the transmission and the engine meet. I figured that's a 
pretty good load bear in place to those jack stands. Anytime you plan on getting underneath something that you jacked up, try to knock it over first before you get underneath it. Good enough. Anytime you're dealing with something this old, you're gonna break a lot of bolts. Oh, As I manage to get bolts out of the tractor without breaking them, put what I can get out of there into the bolster, keep track of lengths and where they came from and whatnot, so when I go to put it back together or need to get new hardware, I know what I gotta get. And I broke another one. This piece that's about to come off is the front end loader front mount. It goes underneath the bolster. This will be the last piece to come off before the bolster comes off. At this point, it's just a mind-numbing amount of bolts that hold that front bolster on. And each one of them, very stuck, very old. If you've stuck with this this far, and you're enjoying what you're seeing, consider throwing a like or two my way. Chickens need to eat. So we're getting to the end of this video. The bolster's about to come off. From here, 
I'm gonna make the whole reassembly of this a whole nother video because it's a pretty involved process. That is good enough for today. Oh.